Good afternoon. It is around June the 5th, and I thought I'd visit or offer you an opportunity to visit. Just a few moments. Yesterday I was pruning this persimmons tree, this young persimmons tree, and I took off a lot of branches. I got interrupted so I couldn't finish it. But I took off a lot of branches that were full of fruit. And I know that a young tree like this, and there's fruit everywhere still, and I plucked as much as I could yesterday before I was interrupted. And now I'm going to take the rest of these off. I wish I had more hands here to show you, but I pruned it radically. And you don't want, in my opinion, of course, for what it's worth, I always like to say, you don't want on a young tree a lot of fruit. I, I noticed that a lot of people pinched their very young fig trees, and, and I'm against that. Uh, we all want fruit. And there's a time and place for everything. One of my videos is there's a time to to pinch and a time to pluck. Right now I'm plucking because I want to strengthen the root system and the general tree and the, the width of the tree before it will have to sustain fruit in the future. Otherwise you have this, you know, it's just hanging down. You got this fruit hanging down. Same thing with young fig trees. And it drains all of the energy of the tree that should be going into the root structure. And in the scaffolding of the tree. And I think it detracts from the tree altogether. In many instances, makes it weak. And in the future, you're going to have a lot of flimsy branches. I see a lot of fig trees with flimsy branches that are not really capable of sustaining a good harvest. That's not good. You know, if you grow your trees in a way without too much nitrogen, and if you know when the pluck, when the pinch, you should get a lot of fruit, and you, and you don't need to really pinch. Pinching is something that I usually do because I want to stop growth. Like if it was a fig, if this was a fig tree, I'd pluck it here on the top. Because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11 leaves there, which will all make a fig. This is persimmons, I understand that. I'm just using this as an example. And I don't want it to be too long because then it gets too flimsy on the top. It drains the tree. The figs aren't as big because you have 20 figs on a branch instead of 10. That's the reason why I generally pinch, not to, not to induce fruiting. I never have a problem inducing fruiting. As If you look at all of my videos... Maybe you'll agree with me. You'll see, you will see that my trees have a lot of fruit. And I, and I rarely pinch. There are ways to do things. Other different ways to do things. What is the old adage? More than one way to skin a cat? I think, I think that's correct. But I, I pop these off. I'm popping them. I'm going to pop them all off. And, and I'm even going to you know do some more trimming. Because... There's just too much weight on this tree. Now, this is one that I grafted. This is Nikita's gift that I grafted onto a regular persimmons tree, American persimmons. And let me go down here. I'll show you. I grafted two things. I grafted right here Nikita's gift. These two are Nikita's gift. And what you're seeing here is fruiting everywhere. And I did a graft on this side. There was two American persimmons growing here. And I put them here. And then I cut them off and I grafted on this one, I grafted an American persimmons called, I, I don't know what it's called. It's unknown and I found it in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And it was such a magnificent tree and I love the taste of this American persimmons. I think it's early golden from my reading. So I grafted the early golden to the other American wild persimmons, the indigenous persimmons that was growing here. And over here I grafted the Nikita's gift. So now that was a mistake. 
because now I have two trees growing side by side competing for the sun. And I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. We make mistakes. Okay, for what it's worth, always say. Uh, and the Nikita gift isn't growing as fast as the American persimmons, which makes sense because this is a hybrid between a Japanese and an American. It's not growing as fast. So now I have to make a choice. Now I've been cutting back this tree too, you know, pretty, pretty dramatically. And uh, I'm gonna to continue to do so. I, I may radically prune it, I'm thinking about it now. I might, I don't wanna cut, I don't wanna disturb the leader. And I do want this to grow tall so it doesn't shade a lot of things in the surrounding area. So I'm, and I have so many persimmons trees, I don't need to have all this growth these lateral branches, I don't really need them all. And I, I need to try to nurture this so that it can grow and have enough sunlight and not have to compete so much with the American version next to it. I have to decide, but if I ever want this to turn into this, <laughs> okay, and look at the fruit on this Nikita's gift. It's just loaded. And over the years, I had to trim it back. I trimmed it again this year. There's, you can see I trimmed it here and here, lots of places. And if you notice in my previous videos, and there are just hundreds of fruits, hundreds and hundreds of fruits on this tree. You can just see them everywhere. But if you've, you might have noticed in my pre, I have two of these Nikita's gifts, pretty big trees, and I've got these very, very heavy rebarbs in the ground because one year there was so much fruit on them and it got away with me. And a strong, strong wind came, very powerful wind across the field, the open field. And they started to lean over, both of them, from the weight of all the persimmons. So I had to slowly, over the, look, look how it's digging in. See how it's digging in? This has been several years, a project to straighten this tree and I and I've straightened it I'm still keeping pressure on it I got to tend to this this is not good I have to put something in there or move this up on top and I will when I'm finished and I have more hands now that I've noticed it but I've gotten this tree to where now it is standing on its own and it's thickened on the bottom and it will support its own weight and the fruit and I'll be able to remove that in another maybe after the end of this year I was just, you know, th there's an old thing. I remember when I was a teacher, my, my students presented me with a, a plaque once, and it said, I'll never forget what it said. It says, as the twig is bent, so is the tree inclined. I think I got that right. And what it means, and it's, boy, did it hold true for my entire life. Uh, what you do when a tree is young, and this has to do with children too, <laughs> you know, the way that they are, their environment, and the way that you shape their environment, and the things you do when they are young, really makes a difference on how they turn out when they're mature. So you have to always keep that in mind when you're pruning. That's that's my first priority, the prime directive when I when I prune. I'm looking at long term. I don't care about a few fruit. So there's some fruit on here, okay? I've got plenty of fruit. And even if I didn't, I get rid of it. I'll get rid of all of it. And I'm not afraid to prune off these branches too. I just have to take a better look at it and see what I want to do before I do it. And I may take most of this off. And I might put a, a rebarb in the ground and pull it back this way so it grows this and I'll bend it. So the tree, <laughs> as the twig is bent, so inclined is the tree. Here's another example. Let's take a quick walk and then I'll end this video. I've been eating strawberries where I have several patches growing all over the place. I certainly love that. But here's another example. Since we're on the subject, here's a big cutting that I started this, this spring. And you can see, I, I don't have any problems with fruit. Look at all that fruit. This is Smith. There's plenty of fruit, just a cutting. 
There's plenty of fruit. And guess what? Watch. Pop. 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 They're coming off. Every one. Because, yeah, I mean, we're always curious. There's a nice one right there. And these would have come to fruition. They, I guarantee you I could have gotten these to come to fruition with my mixtures of food. My low nitrogen and other mixtures that I put in the in the soil, which I have other videos if you want to look at them, to induce fruiting. That's what I go for, fruiting. I want fruiting. And uh, they would have come to fruition, so what? I've got other trees, but even if I didn't, honestly, I would have plucked them off because I want to inspire this tree, encourage this tree to form a better root system. I want to move this into a larger container soon. And I want some more growth here, some more structuring. Maybe I'll get a split. Maybe I will pinch this if, I, if it gets to be that high. Or when it does, I'll pinch it. Any time in the summer, it doesn't matter. And when I do, it will induce another the growth of another branch so that I have two forking up. And so I'm going to determine how this tree winds up, ends up as an adult. And that's what we should always be looking towards doing. That should be our goal. And sometimes you have to sacrifice. Sometimes you have to sacrifice the fruit. Sometimes you have to sacrifice branches like I just showed you. And it, and it hurts. But trust me, in the long run, you won't have a bunch of flimsy branches unable to support fruit. And your tree will be solid. The branches will be thick. The terminal buds will be thick. It will be a fruiting tree, a true fruiting tree, a tree worthy of your collection. It takes time to do these things. Sometimes it takes years. I just showed you with that rebarb. It takes years to accomplish your goal. Okay, so, you know, it, 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 it brings me to an, uh, another subject. I've got, a, I've got so many things to do today. Uh, I think I'll save it. I'll save it for another video, or this video is going to run on, but I, I'm going to uh, introduce another subject. My next video, I promise you, I'll introduce a, an interesting subject uh, that I think you will find uh, valuable and will put to good use. And with that, I, I could take a very, very quick walk. I have videos on how do you acclimate your trees once they've been in the, in the house or the greenhouse, or how do you acclimate them to the sun? And you can see those videos, but I'll just interject this little segment into this video since, uh, it's so, uh, um, since uh, there's an opportunity here. But here I have these trees, several of them that I'm acclimating because I'm going to be moving them into the soil at another location. And so I have them rebarbed in the ground so that the wind won't blow them over. And these are some very, very beautiful Rondi Bardot, which, by the way, are loaded with fruit. Loaded. Loaded with fruit. Okay. And I saw something. I saw these darn spotted lantern flies. Look at this. So I'm going to spray them with a concoction, which I also made a video about last year. So I, I'm going to pay attention. But there's lots of fruit on these trees. And let's see, that one there is, a, that one's a smith that I'm moving to the ground. And these are Rondi Bardot. This is also a large Rondi Bardot. I'm very proud of them. Aren't they beautiful? I love my trees. Aren't they just beautiful? And they're just loaded with fruit. Okay, but I'm acclimating them to the full sun. And as I said, I have them rebarbed in position. And I've got my little trees, my black madera, and a bunch of others here that are also in the wheelbarrow here and, and here and there. And they're being acclimated to this full sun as well because I made another video, which I should release in a day or two, about 
it's a continuation of everyone has a greenhouse a video i released uh, posted earlier this year and this is a continuation of that so i i'm getting ahead of myself on that video but i'll, I'll release that video i promise in a day or two uh, and these were in the house until just recently they were in the house until the end of may and i just took them out and look at the look at the growth on these i, I go into more detail but look at the new growth on these black madeira okay uh, i go in more detail in the in the video that i'm about to release i don't want to get off the subject here but these will stay here for another 10 or 12 days because when the sun comes up in the morning it comes right through under these this big big giant tree okay it comes right through and this all gets sunlight for a couple of hours and that's all i want them to be exposed to and then when the sun is most intense and overhead and most direct it's shaded by this huge tree but this tree is so large that in the afternoon when the sun goes down on the other side you can see that there's a window there there's an area where the sun goes down and it and the sun rays come in here and they hit the trees again on an angle though it's an angle a sharp angle in the morning and a sharp angle in the afternoon. And that's so important because that sharp angle won't damage these trees, okay? But it will send a signal to the leaves to make them generate the necessary enzymes to, produce, to protect them from the ultraviolet rays. And after a week or 10 days or 12 days of that, you can move them into full sun, but I won't do that. In about a week, I'll move them out a little further so they get a little bit more exposure. Instead of two hours of sunlight in the morning on an angle, they get three. You know, and after a couple of weeks, then you can fully move these into the sunlight and you will not get sunburn, which is a problem with, with a lot of people. A lot of people have that problem. They take them out of the greenhouse or they take them out of the house or wherever they have them in shelter, you know, in storage for winter time. And they might even butt out in storage, even if it's in a dark garage or something like that. And then they take them out in the sunlight and then they all get burned. Don't do that. Take them out and do this. <laughs> if you do this, you won't lose one leaf. These have been out for about a week. And they're not, you can see, there's, there's no damage. No damage at all. I think it's the 5th of May now, I believe it is. And I took them out, I think the 29th of May. It's, it's in the video. <laughs> All right. Thanks for visiting. I always enjoy your visits. I hope you enjoy mine. I've taken more and more trees and I've placed them in the ground. I've left for here my Black Madara and my Italian 258s and some of my Smiths and things. My varieties that I really feel that do better in the greenhouse early in the spring. I'll take these trees as I've talked to you about in other videos and I'll, I'm soon to take them out as soon as I have the time and I'll stake them out also under the tree and acclimate them. And once I get them all acclimated, I'll put them over in the full sun, which you've seen before in my other videos. They're being full sun. And this is this is a beautiful figo preto. Look, look how look how gorgeous this tree is. And it's full of fruit. There's fruit everywhere on this tree. And I, there will be no pinching. Okay? And there's plenty of fruit the way I feed them. And there's a Genovese Nero, a Genovese Nero. Beautiful tree, which is None other than Italian 258. Mentioned that before. And there's yellow long neck. There's, there's a couple trees in here, but this is a very large Smith tree. Look how beautiful that Smith tree is. And it's full fruit, everywhere fruit. You see that? Which I'm looking forward to eating. But these trees will be staked out in the sun as once as soon as they're acclimated still early in the season 
and then they will produce many fruits. And there'll be subsequent videos about that as well. As you can see, plenty of my videos that have already been posted on these varieties. And so, been feeding the birds some corn from last winter. And the squirrels come and the turkeys come and eat it. There's still so much work to do. It's too early. There's the farmer's field. And looks like the zucchini this year. They're tiny, still small. What a beautiful day. Lovely. I love it. I love this time of year. I bet you do too. Good day.